So now let's look at some features of the data deluge, uh, which uh, give us a little more detail on the overall process. So this is a slide from Bina Ramamurthy, who has this undergraduate class in big data at the University of Buffalo. And um, she uh, stresses some features which we've sort of mentioned in terms of the pipeline from raw data to to um, knowledge and wisdom, and she uses the term uh, intelligence, which is another way of, <coughs> of um, summarizing the final result of uh, the big data. And as she points out, information is, the cl is a cleaned up form of raw data, and intelligence is sort of the final result. And I did the square root of n analysis, namely, if you want um, information, you better have quite a bit of data. And uh, so, Good intelligence or good wisdom needs lots of data, and um, we are getting lots of data either from single experiments such as the Large Hadron Collider, ATLAS, and CMS, or by the long tail, which is lots of smaller apparatus. And uh, so this uh, model of intelligence coming from data is uh, this data-intensive model of science, or the data-intensive model of actually commodity uh, business. And uh, she also notes here that a lot of, which we've seen in the examples, a lot of the data comes from the web. eBay's data is coming largely from the web, for example, as an Amazon, Amazon uh, as an e-commerce site, and so on. So here's her uh, discussion of some of the aspects of the data systems. We have the raw data, we have algorithms, that's what I I call data analytics. The algorithms are going to go into the programs that process the data and convert data, raw data to data, data to information, information to knowledge and intelligence. Um, and that's she has knowledge down here as the uh, as one of the things, and also the fact that we need obviously a lot of infrastructure and data structures. And these uh, components of the previous slide are discussed here. And um, she also points out that um, we have new data structures, which we already pointed out. These are this platform as a service. And uh, one of the features of data, which is reasonably important, is that it is one, and we write, a, write once, read many times. Most data is not written, rewritten many times. That differs probably from tra typical transaction data. When you keep rewriting your, your bank account uh, data. Um, and um, But if you look at the uh, data which we're using to, to, to look at uh, um, e-commerce and things, that data is just written once. I mean, we gather the data from the web, and then we sometimes, we update it every now and then, but we read it an enormous number of more times than we write it, because every search uses the web data, and that web data is updated from the crawler every now and then. So it's not actually written once, it's just written a few times. Compare, But the number of writes is small compared to the number of reads, and that can suggest a different data structure. Um, <coughs> this comment here is one um, which is um, from me here about the difference between the semantic web and uh, big data or how they relate. So the semantic web is an important concept coming from Tim Berners-Lee, who has made uh, the incredible contribution of uh, inventing HTML. Uh, which effectively enabled the internet to explode in the way we've seen it. And then the idea of the semantic web, would we would annotate or curate the web pages by adding additional metadata. Metadata is data about data, which allows the web browser, which is either a machine or a person, to understand the real meaning of a page. So if we had, uh, say, a doctor's page, we might add metadata telling us uh, his opening hours and his his speciality, and whether he had space for new patients and things like that. But if we actually look at what happened, uh, wasn't so much done with such metadata. <coughs> Rather, search engines were successful because they um, 
used a big data approach, namely a purely data-driven approach. Namely, they took this chaotic data you find on the web, and they present that in fashions and analyze it in fashions that allows you to find the real meaning of a web page without the semantic annotation. And although the semantic annotation is important and uh, in some cases critical, it's surprising how far we've gone with uh, just the big data approach, namely just analyzing data and finding information without a lot of curation. So I think people are somewhat surprised and haven't possibly all of them realized that uh, how important the data only approach to big data is. So here's an example from uh, I found on the, from the very good uh, set of lectures by Jeff Hammerbacher of Berkeley on data science. And uh, he quoted this uh, fellow here, Anand Rajaraman, uh, who was at Walmart. And uh, he, ha he taught a class, and uh, this class um, uh, got involved in the competition. One interesting feature of the internet, there are various competitions. And Netflix had a competition which was to try to find a better algorithm to um, do rating of movies. And um, so he, this, uh, this fellow here, Anand, notes that um, he had two teams which um, looked at this. And um, well, he had several teams, but he looked at two of them in particular. And one of them came up with a brilliant new algorithm. And another one actually used a rather simple algorithm but they added an additional data. And um, the team which added data with a simpler algorithm actually did better than the team which had a sophisticated algorithm. I'm sure that's not always true, but uh, Anand makes this statement that more data usually beats better algorithms. That, uh, so this is a sort of important feature of the data deluge and the big data approach. The size of the data and the richness of the data is very important. Here, notice what they did was they did not do add more of the same data, they added different data. And so that's, that's a very important principle that's been known for a long time. It's sometimes called data fusion. It says that um, you can do very well by, you need to do, in fact, you need to join many data sets together in many, in some analyses. And that's, as I said, that's data fusion. 